Hello, hello, hello. Hey, fun people. Welcome to Everything Aja. And if you're new here, hey, my name is Aja. And here on Everything Aja, I help teachers and even homeschool moms make teaching as manageable as possible. And one way I do that is by helping you prevent burnout by making reading in particular as manageable as possible. With reading, there's so many different aspects whole group, small group, everything under the sun, not, I mean, phonics, every, everything, just everything. So one thing I do here on YouTube is I help you with all of those pieces. I help you manage those pieces and put them together like a puzzle. This kicks off day two of our classroom setup series, preparing for success in reading. It is a five day series. We will be live every single day this week at seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And today, today we're talking about how to actually increase vocabulary skills by creating a print rich environment. So if you are ready, I am ready too. I actually got a new camera and I feel so dark. I don't know how. Um, uh oh. Okay, I don't know what I just did, but um, hopefully I'm not too, too dark for you. I noticed that the camera is a little, a little dark, but hey, I am here. Tried to upgrade for you. Hi, hi, hey, hey, Bonnie. I'm so glad to have you on today. Whoop, whoop. All right, so let's get all down into the nitty gritty. If you don't know who I am, let me just take a moment to introduce myself. Hello, hello. I see you down there in the chat box. My name is Aja. You said it's dark but clear. Okay, well, I'll figure out how to work the settings. Y'all know how it is when you try to do something new. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll we'll just adjust to it for today. But I promise you tomorrow we will either go back to how it was, where it was a little blurry, or keep it like this. All right, well, let me just introduce myself a little bit. My name is Aja. I have my um, specialist in early childhood education, and I am an educational consultant. In the past few, six years, actually, I have been a kindergarten through fifth grade curriculum specialist. What is that? That means that I was an administrator. In fact, I'm pretty much the assistant principal over curriculum. So all teaching and learning, everything, classroom setup, classroom sizes, helping teachers, all of that fell under my umbrella. So that's what I've been doing for the last six years before I started my own educational consultant business. I've spent over 10 plus years in Title I schools, both as a teacher and an administrator. In fact, all I've ever taught at was Title I schools, so I'm very prevalent to how it is teaching in rural areas, and I have my reading endorsement. I'm Orton Gillingham certified, and I'm also certified in correcting and diagnosing um, mathematics and reading behaviors. So that's a little bit about me. I'm dying to know a little bit about you, so definitely comment down below. What is your name? What do you teach? What do you think when you hear the words print rich environment what kind of comes to mind so often i know there's so many misconceptions out there but what comes to mind when you hear print rich environment hello 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 welcome welcome cheryl hey keisha welcome everyone so i'm dying to know just introduce yourself a little bit down below in the chat box we're a community i promise we don't bite uh, we don't bite um I, if you have not already checked out yesterday's live series Yesterday was all about how to get children motivated to read during independent reading time. So today we're going to talk about more about the environment of your classroom or even your homeschooling environment. I know a lot of you guys are homeschool parents that teach full time. So when I say classroom, whatever your at home classroom looks like, that's what I'm talking about. So um, there we go. So today we're going to actually dive into all of the nitty gritties, not only talking about print rich environment, but what does that mean? And what does it mean as far as a literacy rich environment as well? And like I said, it today is day two. Woo, woo. You said fourth grade, woo, words everywhere, everywhere. I love it. So when you hear print rich environment, you just think of words. Hey, we're going to go into that 
to today. I love it. I love it. So I hope you have your notepads ready. If um, Either you're going to get a great lot of good ideas or you're going to say, hey, I'm on the right track and you're going to get the confidence you need knowing that you are on the right track. That's the beautiful thing about, you know, just professional development and learning. You either get the confirmation or you're like, oh, I want to go ahead and change that. Um, hey, Brenda. Hey, Brenda. Welcome. Welcome. Say hi to everyone today. Rainbow Academy of Learning. Whoop, whoop. Um, so, so glad to have you again live. So let's talk about a print rich environment. So we can't talk about it without first covering what is a print rich environment so that we're all on the same accord. Um, this is the definition according to um, redleafpress.org. I love their definition. They describe a print rich environment as an environment in which children are exposed to books read to daily, provide with written materials, their writing is displayed at children's eye level, and meaningful reading and writing experiences are presented. So that definition was just mind-blowing. Um, and so I love their definition. So I definitely want us to like kind of hone in on that definition because a lot of times there's a huge misconception when we hear print rich environment, all we think about are like, like, like you should have said words, just words everywhere. But the reason I really like this um, definition, because it actually talks about all the different aspects, for example, having, you know, writing displayed, um, being at children's eye level, the correlation between words and writing, and it has all of those good aspects um, embedded within the definition. So definitely wanted to include that. Hey, 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 Denise, welcome, welcome. Hey, Marcy, welcome, welcome. So glad to have you here on um, day two of the Classroom Setup Series, all about preparing you for success in reading because like I say, this school year is gonna be your best school year yet. So we just discussed what is a print rich environment, but let's discuss about, okay, why is this actually important? Why am I wasting a good old Tuesday night? And why are you on Tuesday night learning about this? Well, a print rich environment is important because it helps build vocabulary and literacy skills. It establishes a love for literacy and it creates a risk free environment. And last but not least, it facilitates early literacy development. I know so often there's so many people out there, there's so many misconceptions that the primary reason for a print rich environment is that last one, early literacy development. But if you, if you don't get anything from today, I want you to walk away knowing that it's more than that. Print rich environments are not um, just for early literacy development. We're going to go more in depth with that in a little bit. I know we have a fourth grade teacher here. Woo, woo. So definitely print rich environments is for all, you know, pre-K through fifth grade is for each and every one of us. Even if you're teaching a home um, homeschool, you'll notice that a lot of my videos you'll see when I'm at home with my daughter, everything is labeled. And there's a reason for that. Why? Because print rich environments build vocabulary and literacy skills <laughs> and all of these great grand reasons that I have here on the screen. So I wanted to share with you just um, some few quotes. There is an entire, I mean, huge article written by Victoria State Government. And I definitely wanted to pull out some quotes. The one thing is, is key to notice, they don't really necessarily call it a print rich environment. What they call it is a literacy rich environment. So I like how it just doesn't say print because so often when we say print, we just think about labels. And that's it. We just stop right there for some unknown reason, but um, truly a literacy rich environment. So I wanted to share with you guys a few quotes. Um, so this first one says a literacy rich environment provides opportunities for engaging in emergent literacy behaviors in a meaningful, and they're from uh, Canada. So that's why behaviors is spelled like that. In a meaningful and authentic way, the setup of the environment allows educators to facilitate development of key oral language and emergent literacy skills. So the one thing I loved about that part is it did pick out the entire the part of oral language. Oral language is important, especially if you are teaching 
pre-K or even preschool. This is a massive reason behind a print rich environment. I know I put it on there and said, hey, that seems to be the main reason we talk about, but it is true that creating that natural, you know, literacy rich, print rich environment does help children build oral language, but they don't just do that while they're young. That also will continue with them. In fact, did you know that that's one way to kind of add words into the vocabulary bank? We'll talk about that a little later, but uh, definitely. You said yes, watching to get ideas to teach at home. Woo -woo. So we have a homeschool, ho homeschool mom there or working homeschool mom. Hey, that's the thing. That's what I do. Uh, my daughter goes to school and I homeschool her on top of that. So Yes, Bonnie says, sorry, God off. You are the owner and teacher of an early um, learning virtual classroom. Whoop, whoop. Yes, yes, I love it. We're going to have print rich environments no matter if we're online, in the classroom, at home. I love it. All right, let's let, 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 let me keep going. <laughs> it says, a literacy rich environment demonstrates how literacy is used in everyday life by allowing children to interact, keyword, interact with print text and independently with and with educators so there's two two foes they need to interact with the print around them both by themselves and with us but i love how it talks about you know everyday life and opportunities to interact with the print around them um and so then if we keep reading that the the article it also states um Environment print plays a particular role in, okay, y'all clearly know I underline the major parts, stimulating children's emergent reading and writing skills. So for my, where are my um, lower grade, I know what she said fourth grade, but do I have anybody that is teaching children under six, under six, because I mean, Yes, although I said print rich is for upper grades as well, which it is, but it is Five times important for the emergent readers. Why? Because this is literally how they are gaining their language bank. It helps them, like we said, it oral with oral language as well as just learning words and um, learning their learning words, literally, and writing. Um, but I love this quote because it talks about the stimulation of it. Um, and it, it really, in, in a second, I'll break it down, but it really talks about how to like stimulate that emergent reader. In fact, mo my daughter, she's four, and she could literally walk around the house and point to the word door because she sees the door, but she knows that that word has to say door. And I'll talk about why that is. There's actually a connection um, that happens. So we always talk about labeling things, but there's a reason behind that. So I have kindergarten, Marcy's kindergarten. All right, we have one one person that's teaching emergent, li um, emergent literacy. There we go. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> All right, so if we keep going, in the article, it also um, talks about it provides authentic opportunities to develop children's understanding of symbols and that these symbols contain messages. So when you're dealing with children that are like in kindergarten, for example, they're not quite reading it. They're not. They're they're not quite reading it. So for them, those the, the letters that we know that are letters for them that are their symbols. They're literally symbols. They see these symbols attached to different objects. For example, in the picture, there's the word prizes next to the box that has the prizes in it. So they start to, um, it gives them an authentic opportunity to then ask, what does this say? And you could say, this says prizes. And they could start, you know, bridging that gap. Um, and Brenda, okay, pre-K, pre-K. Uh, well, I think I knew you are pre-K because you're a uh, Rainbow Academy. Um, but yeah, so they are, they're starting to make this connection. Um, in an environment, of print also really holds as a tool for us to be able to really hone in on their emergent skills. Um, and I love when it says by using it for functional purposes. So for example, labels on their bag hook. So they'll start to see, you know, that, that's something they use every day. Um, and we're going we're gonna to talk about labels in a second. Let, let me keep going. Let me keep going. Not give y'all too much up front, too much up front. So one more other quote, and then I'll be done with quotes for the, for the night. But I also wanted to include this. It said, print um, knowledge combined with early writing skills have been shown as predictors of later literacy achievement. So those babies that are in pre-K and kindergarten, 
Credit rich environment is literally the key to get them to have um, later literacy achievements. So when we talk about, you know, them reading on grade level or, you know, being um, being able to write proficiently, that is developed literally with the kindergarten and pre kers based on a print rich environment. So that was um, not shocking. I feel like we already know that, but um, it was eye opening. Once again, giving you that confirmation that a print rich environment in the um, the lower grades is so so, so, so important. Cannot stress that enough. And if I haven't said it once, I'm going to say this one more time. A literacy rich, literacy rich environments are not only for primary grades. Yes, I'm, I'm debunking this myth. I don't know when this became a thing that it was only for the lower grades. I have taught fifth grade for just as long as I taught pre-K. I taught them both the same amount of years. And I'm telling you what, I had a literacy rich environment in fifth grade, just like I did for pre-K. <laughs> like they're literally the same, especially if you're dealing with struggling readers in upper grades, they need this foundation. Um, so yes, it's more important in the lower grades because as they're learning how to read, they're learning how to connect the, the symbols with, um, with words, but it's also just as important with upper grades grades. Um, and another thing I just, just had, had, had to throw it in here, literacy rich environments connect print with oral language, writing and reading skills. So the main reason that I'm even on here talking about this is because of this connection, the connection between your environment, the classroom that you set up and children's ability to um, orally oral language, so their oral vocabulary, the words that they speak, the words that they use when they speak, and et cetera. Um, and then also how they write, um, their capability of writing, their um, proficiency in writing, and then also their reading skills. So Hey, that's why I'm, that, 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 that's why I'm here today. <laughs> All right. So then that breaks us into, okay, I should understand what a print rich environment is. You've explained why it's important, but how do you actually create a literacy rich environment? And so that's what we are going to dive in to right now is the how. Well, I'm going to give you the how right now. So if you have notes, definitely grab your paint, pen and pencil. This is that moment. So with a literacy rich environment, you want them to have the first thing is furniture at kids eye level. Why is this important? Because in a second, I'm going to talk Well, the next quote, I could just talk about them at the same time. Also label your furniture. So now let me explain why. So you're going to want to have furniture at children's um, eye level. There is a reason that for primary grades, their tables are lower, of course, so because they're height and stuff, but you wanted the things to have things in their eye level. Why? So because when you label those things, they're actually going to be able to in their words, read those words. But if something's you know high too high up, they're not really going to be able to interact. If we go back to the definition of a literacy rich environment, the key thing that we kept hearing was the opportunities for children to interact with the print. So this means that we have to give present opportunities for children to interact with the print around them. So for primary grades, that's important that everything be really low. Then, and I want you to think, okay, is this eye level for them? If you're teaching at home, hey, label your house. <laughs> label the whole house and make sure everything is at eye level for your children. Um, so that's one way that you can create a literacy rich environment is by labeling and making sure the furniture is at their eye level so that they can actually see it. The next thing is word walls. And this is key, especially my upper grades. Hello, word walls. And I wanted to share um, of how I used to create my opportunities um, for my kids to interact with my word walls. So the way I I always did it. it was, I had a different word wall for each subject. Uh, okay, she said, absolutely. There we go. Absolutely. Yes. Um, so for me, I had a different word wall for each subject. And for my word wall, all I used <laughs> was from the Dollar Tree, the little pocket charts. And I had a pocket chart in the science area, pocket chart in the math area, pocket chart in the social studies area. So, um, and then I had a big pocket chart behind me during my small group instruction. 
So, and each different um, small group had their own vocabulary brain and thus having their own word wall. So I had words all around. Once children began to master words, as in, like, for example, let's say we were in the middle of a social study unit, because I love social studies, like I said yesterday. Um, but once we kind of finished that unit and they learned those words, it was a classroom job for them to then take those words and put them on our massive um, word wall. So we had, I actually turned my cubbies into a huge, massive word wall. And so what we would do, it would allow children to have that interaction. You guys know me. I'm really big on games. Another thing I used to do with the, the mini word walls is we would use those words during our game. So I had vocabulary games. So they were constantly, I mean, constantly taking the words on and off the wall. And it allowed them those opportunities to interact with those words over and over and over again. And then once the unit was over and they've mastered those words, then we put them on the big word wall. And so that I used to always tell them like our big word wall was almost like the back of their brain because everything on here, you, you, you know, like, you know, you know. <laughs> and then we had the words that we were learning. Um, and so that's what I used to do. Um, even my fifth graders interacting with the word wall. So that's for my upper grades. Hey, I just gave y'all some 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 great some goodies right there all right so um the next way you can interact and have a literacy rich environment is having access to books so when i say access to books i mean for your child or for your children they need access to the books in fact i actually have once you're finished with me now down below in the description is another youtube video that i did about how to create this um, um, a literacy rich environment, both in the classroom and at school. I mean, both at home and in the classroom. And in that video, I literally go over the importance of having books in multiple areas. So let me break this down, you know, both examples. So for in the classroom, you, of course, you're going to have books in your small group area, books in your independent learning area, and then other areas that you probably never thought about. You can have a book of the week or an author of the week and then display those books on the on the um, dry erase board in the front of your classroom. And then those books change out. And what you'll notice is if you change those books out, cause they're at eye level for your children, they have access to come up. If you mention, I mean, just takes you five seconds to mention like, hey, and I, I kind of grabbed that one yesterday, but let's say, uh-oh. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. All right, so let's say, um, Okay, so you saw that video. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. You say it was great. Thank you, thank you. So in that video, I really like take you on a tour, <laughs> tour of in the classroom and at home, and you'll kind of see how my house is set up. Um, but let's say you are doing a Dr. Seuss, you know, author study or whatever. So you would just literally play books about Dr. Seuss and display them kind of along your board. And you say, okay, this author of the week is Dr. Seuss. So make sure you guys check out all of Dr. Seuss' wonderful books. And then at the end of the week, I want you to tell me which Dr. Seuss book you like the most. And even if they are pre-K or kindergarten, they'll still want to do this. Of course, they're going to go based on the pictures if they're not reading, duh. But <laughs> it will get them excited and what make them want to learn about the books. A lot of, we underestimate the power of the mention. Think about how recommendations are made with us. It's just, it's just five seconds. Five seconds will make a child just fall in love with learning, I promise you. So, um, just access to books. Oh, and then you can also have books in your math area um, and, you know, kind of different other areas. And then at home, um, and I know I shared that in that video, but just so you guys know right now, I have books in my car for my daughter to read while we're driving. We have books downstairs. They're um, like downstairs. She actually has like a little classroom. I did a whole vlog of how I set that up um, because I don't have a lot of space. So I just kind of had to use what I had. So if you are dealing with a small home and you don't have a lot of space, Check the video out woo, woo, because that was me. <laughs> I don't have an extra room. We don't have a lot of space. So I had to use what I have. Um, but she has a bookshelf there. She has a bookshelf in the hallway right here. So she can get books kind of everywhere. She also has books in her bedroom and she has books in her bathroom. So we have so many different opportunities for her to pick a book. And the important part is when it says access to books is because you want books to be accessible to them. For example, my daughter knows 
not to come and take these books. I mean, she kind of did down there. She kind of she kind of ruined the books down there. She did take them. But she she can't read. Well, she probably could reach up here, but she knows not to take these books up here. So these are not accessible to her. But the books in the hallway, all the other books are at her level. And she knows that she can always freely just go up into them. So I don't know. I don't know if I have anybody on here that's like super controlling. You don't like kids having the freedom to kind of go and pick things. But I'm encouraging you to kind of just loosen up the range just a little bit and allow them to have free access to the books. In order to establish a love for learning, remember we learned on yesterday, and if y'all did not watch yesterday, check it out, absolutely amazing. But we learned on yesterday that kids need the ability to have choice. And that is the same even when you are creating a literacy rich environment. If you are one that just does not like to, for kids to just, kind of mess up your books. You feel like your books are going to get destroyed. Um, I had a group of children when I was teaching probably a second year, third, third. I forget which year, y'all. I don't know. But one of, the, one of those years, and I had kids that were a little destructive. And so what I did, I learned it from another teacher, um, was create a library checkout system, and I made it a class job. Um, and then they could only check out a book, like they could, and I let them kind of take the book home. Like I said, I learned it from her, um, but it actually worked great because a lot of my kids didn't have books at home. But one thing you can do is have like a classroom job. Um, and then once a week, that person goes and they allow kids to check out books. So if you were one that wanted them to switch it out every day, every single day, you can do that. Or you can have their own check in, check out system for like um, um, Keisha, you teach upper grade. So they could literally check the book out themselves and just write their name, date, and the book. That's all it takes, name, date, and book. But then that will help you know who had what book in case your book is, gets ripped. You know exactly who to go back to. And it also helps with accountability as well. All right, so now that we discuss access to books, um, if y'all have any more tips with you know having access to books, Feel free, definitely drop the, your drop drop it down in the chat box. Let us know. Um, this isn't all about me. I love a community. So if you have any other things that you do, um, definitely drop those tips down below as well. Teacher tips are the best tips. Um, the other thing you want to do is have an inviting independent area. So this is really big. When you talk about a literacy rich environment, you want the environment to be something that draws children to reading. You want them to naturally fall in love with reading, but they have to to want to do it. So one thing you can do for your independent reading area is to have chairs or flexible seating. You can do bean bags. You can do, um, I had crates one time and they were just upside down and I had a pillow on top. I made the pillow, yeah. But um, um, you can have a pillow on top. I've seen um, little special rugs, whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever it is that you want to use, but something inviting that gets children to want to just sit down and pick up a book. We always think about print rich environment as like what we have on the wall but it's really when you think literacy rich environment it goes beyond just what is posted on the wall and speaking of posted on the wall the last thing is posters posters also create a literacy rich environment there are so many posters out there about reading about getting children to want to read i know on yesterday um i gave y'all a freebie we went over posters that help children just pick um, independent books to read, those definitely post them. That helps you create that literacy rich environment. So let's go even further. I want to hear from you right now. Do you already have labels um, within your classroom or your home? One big thing, I know I keep saying like it seems like it's the only thing we talk about, but it's because it's a big part. One big part of having a print rich environment is actually actually having print around your environment. <laughs> it sounds so simple, but um, so I want to know, does your classroom or does your home already have labels displayed? So do you have like desk, door, um, table? Like, do you have little labels around your environment? And if you're upper grades, what, what do you have? Because you might not have labels, but do you have posters in each section of your classroom? So let me know that down below. I'm dying to know if you already have something 
in place. And if you don't, are y'all ready for for a treat today? Um, so we have a new tip. Whoop, whoop. Bonnie, Bonnie always comes through with the tips now. She said uh, teachers can ask parents and friends to donate a book or get books from a public library monthly. Oh, that's a good one. Especially if you don't have a lot of books. That's Because I know from my classroom, people are like, how did you get so many books? I had a lot of the books that I used when I was a little kid because I have so many books. And then I a teacher was retiring as I was starting off. So she gave me books. So I did have a lot of books. But that's a great tip, especially if you don't have a lot of books. Um, also, let me know. Um, we couldn't. Let me know if you um, if you're one that just has limited access to books, if you have limited access to books. All right. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. So let me know. Do you guys already have labels set up, especially my pre-K and kindergarten teachers out there? If not, I definitely need you to get on this. Label your environment. It is so important that your environment is labeled. Um, labels actually help the brain connect the object with the letters and symbols on the label. So what do I mean by that? I'm literally meaning if you literally have the word table on the table, what happens with a child is they, they, they know that this is the table. Why? Because that is a part of their oral language. Is that word table, that word is already in their bank of vocabulary words. Then because you have the word table on the label, you can literally start, start them off with phonics. So they'll can show them to point, well, that word says table. Um, and they'll start to know, oh, because I know what this object is. I know what this word is. And that builds confidence. As they get around about in kindergarten, you could take it then a step further. Well, I want you to point to the word table. And they can really start learning beginning sounds simply because they know that the word table is on the table. Then they can know that this word table, and then they can actually confirm. You can confirm with them, well, what is the first sound you hear? The first sound I hear is t. And so this word, do you see the letter that makes the t sound? Yes, it actually is a T. It starts with T. So is this word really table. It has to be. Even if they're not reading, they should be able to do that. All I did was guide them with some questions. Okay. Um, and so you'll do that. So labels literally help children's brains connect the actual object with the letters and symbols on the label. So this is why it's so crucial to label things. You said like this. Whoop, whoop. Glad you like it. Glad you like it. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the next the next issue. Well, we talked about with the definitions of a print-rich environment that it was important to connect the environment, the words, the words that we post, the words that we have labeled around our classroom um, in order to get them to actually read. And per the definition, it talked about creating opportunities for children to do this. So this means that there's a gap. There's a gap between the actual physical labels in your room and getting children to read those words in a book. There is a gap. So how do we close that gap? Per the definition, we have to create opportunities in order to close this gap. I see the thumbs up whoop, whoop, down below. And if you're not a member yet of the community, what are you waiting on? <laughs> Simply join us by subscribing down below. All right. So Let's also talk about how do you go from labels to literacy skills? Because I know that's what we all want to see. We all want to see the ending result. Well, because I labeled my table and because I labeled my doors, what is that doing for children? How can I go from just the labels to the literacy skills? I'm rolling it all out tonight, all out. All right. So here we go. Definitely take a screenshot. That's what I would do. But these are some literacy rich activities that you can do in order to close that gap between the labels and um, literacy skills. So the first one thing you want to do is always point to labels. So for example, if I'm always, if I'm telling them to line up at the door, then naturally, as I always go to the door, I'm always pointing, okay, I want you guys to line up at the door. And you just 
point to the word door. It is so simple. But what you don't even realize is that you are modeling to them that this word says door. And so I promise you, I promise you, when you're not looking, they are doing the same thing. They're pointing to the, the label that says chair. They're pointing to the label that says desk. They're pointing to the, the label that says shelf. They're pointing to the label that says refrigerator. And they'll start to point to the words that are actually connected with the labels on their environment. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, Tangela. Glad to have you today. Um, the other thing you can do, I said it earlier, is the beginning sound activities with the label. So I kind of I kind of ruined it for you. I already gave it to you. But just literally do a lot of um, early phonics activities connecting the words because with with with, with, with <laughs> at this age especially if you're dealing with um emergent readers they know what that word is simply because they're connecting the object with the word so what you want to do is like a lot of beginning sound activities with them just like i stated earlier you know does this word say t -t table if i hear the letter that says t Yes, yes. And so they're just connecting those words. Um, and then you can even mix it up if, they're, if they could do that with their eyes closed. Maybe you take the labels off, mix them around. Now, can you point to the word that says table? And so now, by the time you've done that, you've taken it from from um, having the clutch of seeing the table to actually understanding beginning sound. So you kind of created that bridge. That's how you really close the gap and take it to the next level. Um, you can also interact with word walls. I, I gave y'all all my good examples earlier, but, <laughs> but just like I was sharing you, I take the labels down. We do um, games with the same word words that we put, the vocabulary words that we then put on our word wall, make those into games. And then when they're done, then those same words then go on to your word wall and kids will start to connect them because you're creating the opportunities for them to actually interact with these words. Um, so for if you're one that's like, I've never thought about that. You can th do things like have Velcro on the back of the words so that you can easily take them on and off. For me, I didn't really have Velcro, but for me, I use the, what is it? Um, well, I told you I use pocket pocket charts. So that's what I used to use. And then when I put it on the permanent word wall, I actually did a uh, masking tape on the back. Um, and then last but not least, you can promote the independent reading area in order to create that literacy rich environment. Not going to go into that too in depth. We literally just covered it on um, day one of this five day challenge. Um, so if you did not watch yesterday's video, definitely watch it. Um, down below, I have the link under here to um, the videos. Um, so it's a five day series that we're doing all about setting up our classroom. So day one was that area. So um, let me also know down below in the chat box, what does your print rich, your current state of a print rich environment, what does that look like? Like what does your classroom look like now? And then your desire state, what is it that you would want after hearing all of this? What is it that you want to implement? Um, I know, I know, hopefully, hopefully if I'm doing an ounce of my job, you are leaving with something new to go ahead and implement within your classroom. That's really simple. When I say classroom, that's even if you're homeschool. I told y'all, still your classroom too. Still your classroom too. Um, so this is just one area. Creating your classroom setup is just one part of reading. In fact, reading comes with so many different parts. There are, we talked about independent reading, but there's also small group, whole group reading, phonics, vocabulary, and there's just so many pieces that it's, it's quite difficult to really keep up with all of them or even manage all the different pieces. And that ends up leading to burnout, unfortunately. But that's what I'm literally here for is to help you prevent the burnout that comes in literacy. I want you to imagine having a bank of lessons that encourage optimal engagement for children, lessons that are already engaging that make children 
fall in love with reading. Imagine having a weekly lesson planning system that literally allows you to save hours of planning. I'm telling you, it is possible. Imagine having schedules, routines, and transitions and management tools that allow you to be stress-free. You literally can um, achieve more while working less, I promise you. Um, imagine having simplicity and clarity on what to teach, when to teach, and how to teach it. Imagine having a Effective reading professional development at your fingertips. This week is just just a little taste of it. Um, imagine having high reading growth in your students or your child that actually surpass their goals and being supported along the way by a professional. All of this is totally possible. So I want to help you by um, you come into my free workshop, The Three Secrets to Teaching Reading with Ease. This is a live free workshop. Doesn't cost you a thing. Live workshop next Monday at seven o'clock, the exact same time. Um, but it will be a private viewing, a more intimate viewing, intimate setting. We will actually be on Zoom versus being here on YouTube. So you do have to kind of sign up and register, but I promise you, you're going to love it. I promise you. Um, in that workshop, you're going to learn what everyone gets wrong about teaching reading and what you can do instead. You'll learn the game-changing mind shift that will have your reading instruction run on autopilot. You'll learn how to reimagine what's actually possible with so much new free time because you have a system that's actually fun and simple. And you'll also walk away knowing the one step you can immediately implement to achieve high growth while working less. I told y'all it is totally possible. You can, it's totally possible. It's all about having reading systems. Well, I hope you guys are already signed up. We talked about having labels today. Well, these labels are yours free. I'm giving it to you. All you have to do is sign up to join us for this workshop. I cannot wait to welcome you next Monday to the free workshop. I mean, literally doesn't get any better than this. So these labels that we talked about how to create a print rich environment are yours free. The link to sign up for the workshop is pinned at the top here. And it's also down below in the description for my people that are watching the replay. We're on my replay watchers, <laughs> but it is free for you. And then coming up, Coming up later this week, um, we are doing this live every single night at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, yesterday, we talked about how to get children to actually want to read, and we talked about that independent reading time. Today, we're talking about how to create a print-rich environment in order to build those language skills. Tomorrow, I hope to see you guys live tomorrow because tomorrow we'll be talking about how to get children excited to read. So that's more about that motivation piece, getting children to feel motivated to actually read. Um, and then Thursday, we're going to talk about how to set up your classroom for guided practice. That's that small group time, that time where you're able to implement reading strategies versus whether they be decoding or comprehension strategies. And then on Friday, we're going to talk about how to have a data-driven classroom. Even if you're a homeschool mom, remember your homeschool environment, even if you're working homeschool mom, it's still a classroom. You are still teaching. So all you have to do is come to our free workshop once again, the three secrets of teaching reading with ease. When that workshop, we're going to discover the secrets to getting your reading instruction to run on autopilot so that you can teach with ease. If you are liking these, um, these free, this free five day challenge, definitely invite some friends, spread the word, spread the word. You don't want, nothing's fun if you do it by yourself, but it's always more fun with a friend. So your next steps, your next steps is to make sure you sign up for that workshop. Cause if you like these, I guarantee you, you will love the workshop. Um, and like I said, it's a more intimate group. So we'll be able to see each other um, on both, on both um, levels. And so 
is once you sign up for the workshop in the welcome email, you there is a link for you not only to get the labels that we talked about today, but also even the um, goodies that we went over yesterday. So you'll get all the goodies. So might as well just, you know, sign up. Um, so and then once you get your labels, your next step is to use the labels. It's time to start posting. One thing I can recommend is that you laminate them so that they can be used year after year after year. Hello. And then invite a friend. So grab your freebie, save your spot. Spots are limited, remember. He said, thanks for doing this tonight, looking up Scholastic Place Cards now for the home. What? That's what I'm talking about. Um, and you, now you have free labels. I don't think you knew that those were yours when you, when you typed this. So now you have some. For free. <laughs> for free. For free. Who does not like free stuff? I know I do. Um, you said big value, guys. Woo -woo! You'll be amazed at the possibilities of your teaching strength. Absolutely. Bonnie is a proud member of, um, of my Teaching by Design program, and she has seen the value, and she can't wait for you guys to even join her. Um, so I know if you love these, this free five-day challenge, and you're absolutely going to love the workshop. Um, and don't forget, definitely hit the thumbs up button right down below. That definitely helps um, just support the channel. If you've gotten value, if you learned anything about your Print Rich environment, definitely hit the thumbs up button. I will greatly appreciate that. So you have something to do. You have something to sign up for. You have a workshop to sign up for. And don't forget, I will see you tomorrow at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time as we talk about how to get children motivated to read. You said, yes, laminate them. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. She said, thank you for all the information. Woo -woo. Yay. I'm glad that you found the value. Um, and, and hopefully I'll see you the whole rest of this week. It's, it's, we have, I have, I have some goodies rolled out for y'all. Um, this is my first time doing this five day challenge. So, um, you guys are definitely, I'm so open to feedback and all of that, all of that. I love feedback. So definitely, um, Open the feedback. If y'all are like, yes, if y'all want something else, let me let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Um, so yes, I'll see you guys tomorrow, seven o'clock. Invite a friend and sign up for the workshop. And I'll see you guys then. So you're gonna watch the replay. Oh, awesome, awesome. Cause yeah, I think you came in a little later. So definitely watch, watch the replay, watch the replay. All right, y'all. See you guys tomorrow. Have a good